Now we need to create a confidence interval for a population mean where sigma is not known. So the concept is still the same. It's still our point estimate, plus or minus our margin of error. So whatever our sample value is, plus or minus the most we're willing to be off by to find the true population mean. So when sigma was known, we did x bar plus or minus our margin of error, where I've listed the margin of error. Now when sigma is not known, it's not going to feel a lot different because we still do x bar plus or minus the margin of error. And in terms of words, the margin of error is the same. Both margin of errors start with a critical value. The critical value is multiplied by a fraction with a standard deviation on top and the square root of the sample size on the bottom. But what's different is when sigma is not known, you don't have a sigma to put in your numerator. You just have a sample standard deviation. And in that case, we've used the t table for our critical value, not the z table. So taking x bar plus or minus e, where we know what e looks like, we really have this formula for a confidence interval where we have our lower number first because we subtracted the margin of error and our larger number second because we added the margin of error. And this formula is exactly the same as the one in the box to the left of it, except for by using the less than mu, less than symbol. It just kind of helps show that we're assuming the mean is somewhere in there. And the only other thing to remind you about when working with um, confidence intervals or really your calculator in general is if you can't enter an entire number into your calculator because it's 10 digits, if you want to shorten it, at least use five digits to the right of the decimal because otherwise your round off error can be quite significant. So we just discussed, you know, what the confidence interval looks like. But I mean, the biggest difference really is what table you're using to find your critical value. Um, so just to kind of go over that a little bit more detail. We first, you know, decide, do we have a population standard deviation? Because that's our big decision maker. Um, when it comes to deciding that, if you see the words unknown population standard deviation or the symbol sigma, then yes, you have a population standard deviation, but usually you're just paying attention to the sentence that in your question. So like if you had a question that said, create a confidence interval about cat's weight, um, age. Tom sampled six cats and he found the average age to be 12 years with a four year standard deviation. So you heard the word standard deviation but it didn't say population or sample, but it's in the sentence about the sample of the six cats. So if the subject of that sentence was six cats, they had an average age of 12 years with a standard deviation of four years, then we're referring to the sample, and so you do not have a population standard deviation. And so really quickly, just to run through the flow chart, if you did have a population standard deviation, Remember, you need a normal distribution to use the Z table. But if you don't have a normal distribution, we learned that if your sample size is 30 or more, then central limit theorem says you still get to use a Z table because large enough samples, no matter what the population distribution was, are bell-shaped. So if you're working with a sample standard deviation, because you do not have a population standard deviation, you still needed a bell-shaped distribution, but you're using the t-table because you did not have the standard deviation. Um, if you don't have the normal distribution, the large sample size still applies to being able to use the t-table. Now, I mentioned here that we can't solve these problems. They can be solved. It's just not skills that we're learning in this particular class.